Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So today I have four tips on how to express your frustrations to your spouse. So go ahead and stay tuned after this. All right, family, thank you so much for coming on back. So before I get to my four tips on how to express your frustrations with your spouse, let me just say that if you are listening to this channel, if you are watching my channel, if you are interested in making sure that you and your relationship is going to be the best that it can be, just remember, in order to support me to continue to make these videos free, guess what? I have three online courses. Yes, three online courses, depending on where you are in your stages of your relationship. Maybe you are the super single girl who needs to work on herself, who needs to get herself all the way together before you start dating. I have a course down in the description box below called the super single girl course specifically for you go ahead and click on that link and purchase that online current course the beauty about these courses is that you can work on them in your own time at your own pace all right so go ahead and purchase that if you need to work on yourself for the second group you two that are in the dating stages if you are in the dating stages and you need help navigating through the dating stages what you actually need to do what you actually need to say to where to to Think about the things that you need to think about in order to be able to date and and get the results that you want, which is actually a relationship. Then I have a course for you who are in the dating stages. And my third course are, is for anybody that is in a long-term relationship or that is married and you need to add some spice to your relationship. You need to bring everything back to the surface and make it more giddy, make it fresh again, then I have a course down in the description box for you called my long-term or married course. Check out those courses in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. So we, yes we, we can increase the marriage rate while simultaneously decreasing that divorce rate. Now, on to my four tips. The first tip is to make sure that the timing is right. You do not want to have a conversation with your spouse just because you, yes you, the person that needs to deliver the information is ticked off and you need to get this stuff off of your heart. You need to get it off of your chest. Make sure that the timing is right. Me personally, what I like to do when it's time for me to have a conversation with my spouse, then I absolutely make sure that it's a time where the time where I was ticked off or even him, he was ticked off or if I'm the one who's going to him to get us back to talking again because a lot of time, usually it's just not that serious if you two communicate. And sometimes one of you will have to be the bigger person in order to break the silence you have to go to the partner even though you don't think that you were wrong yes even though you don't think that you were the person who was in the wrong sometimes you are going to have to be the bigger person and actually go to your spouse so the conversation can begin again and you can actually get things off of your chest where you had time to sit back and actually think about what you want to say and how you want to say it because most of the time the person on the receiving end yes i am the person that now you're coming to to deliver the message to and i am not going to be listening if the timing is not right which brings me to point number two the timing also goes into you making sure that you are not mad or angry because if you come to me when you are in the state where you are mad and angry, I'm not going to be able to hear and receive the message that you're trying to deliver to me. What I'm actually going to be doing is getting pissed off right along with you. And guess what? Neither one of us is hearing each other. And so it doesn't even matter what you were trying to say. It was futile. That whole delivery was futile because you didn't wait for the correct time. And then when you came to me, you didn't think about what you wanted to say. So so I can actually think about what you're trying to say so we can hear each other. So we can actually have a conversation with each other. Only thing you're doing is blah, 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 blah. And why didn't you do this? And why did you do that? And why? I'm not trying to hear all that because I'm not a child. So you can't come speaking to me like I'm your child and expect me to receive the information well at all because I'm not. 
The more you snapping at me, the more I'm snapping at you. So make sure that the timing is right. Yes, you want to get it off your chest. I am only saying delay the conversation. Delay the conversation until you have had time to know that the timing is right. And even if you two are not, like it's not something where you two are not speaking, maybe you need to get something off your chest, but the person just walked through the door from their job and they're tired and you have not given them a chance to unwind. Wait until after they've been home for an hour or two before you start dumping all of your extra stuff onto them because you have to remember they just walked in the walked in the door from their job and all of their co-workers stuff and all of their bosses stuff and all of their friends stuff and all of that other junk and traffic and everything is all on their mind. So when they come to their home, they want it to be a sanctuary. Give them time to unwind, whether that's an hour, whether it's two hours, whatever their time frame is. Yes, this is, an, this is a bonus right here because this is not even on my list. Ask them. Ask what is the appropriate time for you to come and start talking about the things that you need to actually say to them and not just the things that you want to get off your chest, just things in general, how your day was, what happened with the kids, all of the things that you need to actually talk about. Talk to your spouse about. Like I seriously, with, with my with my husband, because actually we got married, y'all. We got married anyway. So when my husband actually comes to the door, guess what? I don't automatically start dumping stuff on him. Now sometimes I'm not good at this, but I am working on this consciously, where I have to take a step back in order to just let him chill for a minute. And then after an hour or two, just like I'm saying to you guys, I'm still able to get out all of the things that I need to get out. But sometimes I even personally need to come in the house and just unwind. And you guys know as parents and as wives and, and even as husbands out there, excuse me, that when you come home sometimes and then you have the family on top of your entire day and then you don't have a chance to unwind, there is an unnecessary tension that can occur. So just again, let me go on back into it. Think about the timing. Number two, when you go into it, don't be mad or angry when you're trying to deliver the message that you need to deliver to your partner, okay? The third tip that I have for you, three, <laughs> is to Learn how to share your message in a constructive manner, i.e., don't do the blame game. Don't say, for instance, I did X, Y, and Z because you did X, Y, and Z. No, 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 no. That is basically a tit for tat type of thing. I only did this because you did this to me. You only, you hurt my feelings doing X, Y, and Z, so I'm going to hurt your feelings doing X, Y, Z. Like, grow up. Yeah, just grow up. Well, we don't do that here. Here at this channel, we are grown adults. And we are able to speak to each other in a manner where we are both able to take in said information. So don't do the tit for tat. Don't, you, don't do the blame game. In order to speak to your partner, say it in a constructive manner. For example, hey baby, you know when you actually came in the house and you started yelling at me? That really did hurt my feelings, and I really don't like the way that you said X, Y, and Z to me. And and the reason why I don't like it is because X, Y, and Z. That is a more constructive way to share your feelings and your frustrations with your spouse, with your partner, with your mate, whatever word, whatever stage you are in, or you can insert that where you actually are in a relationship. This is how you can actually get your partner to hear what you need them to hear and they'll actually be able to think about it because in that moment, maybe they haven't thought about your particular point of view. And so maybe they need to take a step back and be able to actually hear what you're trying to deliver to them. So that is a more constructive way to deliver the same message, even if you was to go to them with all of that. Because nobody likes to be talked at. We like to be talked to. Don't talk at me. Because guess what? That same attitude is exactly what you're going to receive back. 
talk to me and not at me. Don't do the blame game. You didn't do this because they did that to, the, to you. You did it because you wanted to do it. And you're only using it as an excuse. You see? Does that make sense? You're only using what you did as an excuse because you really wanted to do it. But because they did you wrong, now it's your opportunity to say, I'm doing X, Y, and Z because you did A, B, and C. And it just doesn't and should not work that way. We want healthy romantic relationships here. And so you don't have to pay the tip for tag game. All right, I'm going to move on. Number four kind of goes with number three, just like number two kind of went with number one. Number four is make sure that your reaction is not based off of how they reacted. Concentrate more on what they're actually saying versus how they're saying it. Now, I know I already said that it's important how you actually say something versus what you're saying. But in this particular thing, you have to understand that your partner might not have listened to this message. And so you have to decipher through all of the junk, which is how they're saying it to you. Think about what they're actually saying to you and try not to be reactive to how they reacted and being reactive to what they're actually saying. Try to be the bigger person and take a step back. Now, I'm not saying that these things are easy to do, but the more you practice them, the easier they will be. And you also notice when you're doing it the wrong way. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Are you going to mess this up sometimes? Yes. Do I still mess this up even though I know the information? Yes. Because we are all human and we get into our feelings at some point. And guess what? We need to get this off our chest because you did da 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 Right? But that's not the way to do it. So practice, practice, practice any and all of the information, tips and tools that I'm giving you here. Because as I mentioned... Here at I Love Me, 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 I am supplying you guys with the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships so we could decrease the divorce rate by simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. So now, if you love this video, yes, I said love. If you love this video and you love how real I am, then definitely go ahead and give me a thumbs up down there. If this is your very first time here to I Love Me, 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 and you love to hear real, the truth, informational videos and just inspiration and motivation from time to time then definitely go ahead and hit that red subscribe button or the icon with my lovely face all right i will see you again in the future deuces